You ever feel like a ping pong ball or a yo-yo or maybe worse, a piece of flotsam on the sea of life being kicked around? Uh, I had a day like that today. I was um, trying to paint at my daughter's place and I was uh, trying to do with other issues and I got a phone call. I had to go to a certain department of the government and when I got there, we found out that another department of the government hadn't clicked a certain box that clarified things so that I could qualify at this point. And so I had to go back there and that didn't work. And back and forth, I went three trips to one and two trips to the other. It seemed like such a waste of an afternoon, but because I'd been through that, the this woman that I was dealing with felt sorry for me and began to talk to me in, about her personal life. And pretty soon she was pouring out her life on the table. Uh, her husband had left her for a man and she ended up with cancer and all sorts of issues that came in her life. We began to talk about the Lord. And um, before long, 45 minutes later, uh, I was sharing with her the, the wonderful blessing of knowing the Lord and knowing your sins forgiven. And it wouldn't have happened if all of this hadn't been the precursor to her showing compassion to me, <laughs> where in reality, the Lord was showing compassion to her, right? So in times like that, here's a great passage to, to lay hold of. It's in Ephesians chapter 1, beginning in verse 19, and it says, what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe, right? So things that happen to us are not because he doesn't have the power to change it. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead, right? So in other words, anything short of death, he's got it covered. If he's got death covered, you can be sure he's got everything else covered too. But God then seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, listen, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, every name on the letterhead, every name on the brass plate on the door, every name on the business card, every name is beneath him. He is above it all. And so this is the the wonderful uh, grip he has, the grip of grace he holds us in, and he, he lets us know that whatever things are happening to us, it's not because he has a lack of power or authority, because he's over all. Now, I want to tell you a story about this. Uh, some years ago now, I was in the country of Japan. And there's a dear couple there, uh, who had served the Lord for many years. I think they came to Japan maybe in the 50s from Germany, Christian and Annalisa Stecker. And uh, they had bought a little piece of property up in the town of Karuizawa, which is up in the mountains. During the hot Japanese summer, people go up into the mountains uh, for the cooler climate. And, and so they had this little property called the Bible House. And uh, it was a beautiful camp. They've used it in wonderful ways for the Lord over the years. Well, they had built a few buildings around the edge, and they wanted to clear out some of the trees in the center of the property. However, when they contacted the city officials, by this time, the emperor had also purchased property and had built himself a palace in Karuizawa. And uh, so they said, well, you know, of course, the emperor was treated as not only royalty, but as deity, and all of the trees were sacred. And so he w was told, you cannot remove the trees. These are sacred trees. And so he said very quietly, well, I'll have to go over your heads. They mean to the emperor, they said? No, I'm going to go over his head. I'm going to speak to God about this. And so they began to pray and ask the Lord to somehow arrange for these trees to be removed so that they would have a play area for the camp. And what do you know? A typhoon came in 
And it came down on Karuizawa, but it only removed the trees on the property of the Bible house. In fact, there was one tree that was starting to go, and they saw it, and they cried out to the Lord, saying, no, we need that tree for our picnic table. (laughs) And the tree is half out of the ground, leaning over like an umbrella over the picnic table. It continues to grow, even though it was halfway gone when they cried out to the Lord to leave it there. He controls every sparrow, every tree, every heartbeat, every every circumstance, and all those in authority are subject to him. So this is a tremendous thing. We have open door access 24-7 to the one who is the authority in the universe. Above all, above every principality and every power, every might, every dominion, every department of the government, every circumstance, the Lord is Lord of all. So be encouraged. Um, this, this experience in the life of the Steckers caused the city fathers to realize there was a man of God in their town, a true man of God. And the mayor every year puts on a, a luncheon for all of the owners of the spas and the well-to-do families and, and the resort owners. And he always invites the Steckers, their guests of honor of the mayor, because they took the opportunity to let God be God, to show that the Lord Jesus was the sovereign authority. So instead of getting frustrated in certain circumstances, I know it's easy to to feel hard done by, let's realize that God could change these circumstances if he wanted to. And perhaps the reason he's allowed them to unfold the way they're happening is because he has an intention to influence these authorities. We might think the arrest of the Apostle Paul and his imprisonment was the worst thing that ever happened. Instead of him traveling the world, preaching the gospel, seeing people saved, churches established, he's stuck in a prison cell and eventually is going to go and be beheaded by Caesar. God was in control. Paul calls himself a prisoner of Jesus Christ. He ends up writing the prison epistles. What would we do without them? And he ends up preaching the gospel to Caesar and his household. So, relax. The Lord is in control. The nail-scarred hand holds the universe. And When we feel frustrated, remember these verses. That the Lord you worship, the Lord you love, all things have been put under his feet. And the very next verse says that he's the head over the church which is his body. If everything is under his feet and we are his body, it places us in a position with him above the fray. We don't have to battle these forces. We submit to the Lord and we allow him to do his gracious will. 